album review time. Um, this one, uh, we're going to go down under. <laughs> Good eye. For our uh, review on the podcast, um, myself and Duncan have been checking out the upcoming release from Australian progressive metalers Caligula's Horse. Um, they are about to release their fifth album, Rise Radiant, on May 22nd via Inside Out Music. Uh, the band formed in 2011, uh, but I'd say there's definitely been a bit of a buzz about Caligula's Horse since the release of uh, Bloom in 2015, uh, which was their first album on Inside Out, and saw them touring with bands like Mastodon and uh, Opeth, Dillinger, Tesseract and all that. Uh, then 2017 they released In Contact, and then that saw the band break the Australian ARIA Top 50 chart, and saw them pack out venues across Australia, the UK and Europe and also tour in America for the first time. So, it has been three years since the release of In Contact, but have the band made much progression oh, I see what you did there. You're so, so wet. <laughs> on Rise Radiant? <laughs> Sorry, I had to be done. Um, so, Caligula's Horse, Duncan. Yes. Are they a band you are overly familiar with, or...? What was interesting about this one is you dropped me a line when we were kind of batting around the ideas on what we might review as albums. So like people, like just from the sheer list of things we've already spoken about, there's pl- yeah. you know there was no shortage of things that could be reviewed on this episode, Dave. Right? <laughs> no shortage. Um, and you'd said to me, Caligula's Horse. Like I, I think the, the question you posed is, have you ever heard these guys before? And I had in the back of my lizard brain, as like that. <laughs> There is an Australian band called Killigas Horse, but I don't know if that's the same one or if I even have the right name. You're like, no, 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 that's him, that's him. And I I will be honest, I had a vague knowledge of them, okay. but not to the point that I could have said, oh, oh, yeah, this is the genre that they exist in, or this is what they, you know, like fully what they sound like, or here's, here's the single they released. So I've obviously heard that they've been touring with someone or the name stuck out because it's such an unusual name. Mm-hmm that I, I didn't know what to expect and you were like that oh well they've just released you know I think it was The Tempest or Slow, Vi- yeah. Slow Violence was like the, the single that had just been done and um, I went away and checked it and I was like that I'm digging this Dave and you were like well cool we will review their album and here it's here <laughs> like just as it materialised in your hands and you like, fired that across to me um, and I've listened to it a good three or four times okay it's so it's proggy yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, we can see that it's a proggy album. Yes. Um, their strength, interestingly, I think lies in their ability not to get lost in the weeds of progginess. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's yep. a very, very, very catchy fucking album. <laughs> like the the vocals soar and they are so memorable. Um, and that's just that. That's the bit. Like I, I. If a band's got clean vocals, I tend to find myself gravitating towards what is this singer doing? You know, like, is he just copying what the guitarist is playing? I hate that. You know, where they just copy exactly what the guitar's playing, but they sing along with it, and it's like, I, I can't stand that. Like, so to me, it's the vocal range, what melodies are they using? Are they, you know, opting for things like counterpoint and, and stuff? And this guy's vocals are impeccable. Like, yeah. absolutely fucking impeccable like across the board great um, I don't know if I can do this is amazing but then in the background what you've got is like at times like flourishes are really 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 clever I wouldn't go as far as virtuoso playing but really really clever like little riffs on what they're doing mm-hmm. but they never over egg the thing like, I, yeah, I yeah. can listen to prog music to an extent but when things start going like nuts for the sake of you know, let's let's get this 70s moog synth in for no reason at all other than this two second section where I'll play 17 notes at once because uh, jazz man um, that's where it loses me I think that if you are experimenting with in- instrumentation experiment with specific aspects of songwriting then it should be there for the benefit of the song and no more yeah. than that yeah. and Caligula's Horse have it spot on for me like there are moments on this album where songs easily drift over seven minutes, mm-hmm. and they don't feel like they're seven minutes long. Yeah. 
yeah, it doesn't feel like they are rehashing the same thing over and over again it's like every song is its own little journey and it takes you on this little journey you get the high the high parts of that and the lower parts and then it takes you right through it and then it hands you off like almost it's handing you off to the next person that's going to take you on your next journey yeah, yeah. and I, you know I thoroughly enjoyed it I will say this about it um, mm. as a slight negative on it overall is that well I've listened to it three times all the way through um, and you know really enjoyed those those three listens after about the third listen I was like cool I can go I can go a couple of months without listening to this now I'll probably listen to it towards the end of the year but mm. I probably won't go back and that's not to say anything about it but it, you know it's a it's a really interesting weaving sort of album with like really beautiful melodies at times and, and really good songwriting yeah. but it's and I, without context of you know are they better than previous releases or whatnot? Um, mm. it's a really really strong album but I think they're just missing something and I can't quite put my finger on it but overall yeah, yeah I mean it's a bit it's, at, at times there are moments of real beauty on the album when you're listening to just the lady paint pictures I think the last song is easily longer than 10 minutes I, mm-hmm. I can't remember exactly what the run time of the last song is but I remember listening to it going like that. That is that you know, like I've heard bands like Tool play songs that are ten minutes long, and I'm like that. Right, we've repeated that, you know, that particular motif or whatever a few times more than I feel I would if I if I was in a recording studio. But you listen to the last song. I think it's called The Ascent, and mm. it's just a it's just a really 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 well written album, and that is just a really really well written song. Yeah. It was surprising actually because. Generally, if you say, do you want to listen to a prog album, my gut reaction is, <laughs> do I have to? Um, <laughs> and I'm quite glad that I did. I, th- I, th- I think they're really, I can see why there's buzz about them, because yeah. they're very talented at what they do. And yeah. the production on the album is a million dollars. It fucking yeah. sounds amazing. So, yeah. What did you I think? think? I pretty much agree with everything you've said, to be honest. Um, uh, I had listened to Blue Man and Contact before, so I was kind of, pretty much, kind of familiar with the band. Um what I did find about those old albums were, like you said, they, they did have their kind of experimental moments on them, um, where they did go a wee bit more proggy, um, and that's not the case so much with this album. Um, what I did like about it was it's, it's eight tracks in total, so you're, you're talking just under 50 minutes long. Yep. Um, there's next to no filler on this album at all. Um, it starts very strongly indeed. Uh, you, the, the Tempest is the first track on the album, and it completely knocks it out of the park straight away. Um, no kind of long intros or clean build-ups, um, just straight in there, like a flurry of like, bendy riffs and rhythms, um, kind of like they did on In Contact, but even more direct than that. Um, and as you said, the first thing that hit me there was the production. I was like, wow, this this sounds huge. Um, even in comparison to their previous two albums, the production has just been taken right up a notch. Um, and those kind of like staccato style riffs of it, they've got a real bite to them this time. Um, but at the same time, the, the kind of other instruments feel very well balanced in the overall mix. Um, and the, the kind of huge riffs continue on, like into Slow Violence, which is another song they released, um, one of the first singles they released. Um, and I, I suppose it was on this track that I started to kind of pick up those little kind of nuances that kind of reminded me of bands like uh, Hacken or um, Rendezvous Point or, and even Tesseract at times as well. Um, but they never sound like a ripoff. Um, mm-hmm. each, each track on Rise Radiant has its own little kind of own personality or individuality, uh, and because of that, I felt like the track, the, the album, never really became samey or repetitive. Um, track three, though, a uh, track called Salt, it was one of my favourites on the album. Uh, slightly longer, as you said, it's like seven and a half minutes, um, but there's lots of like tempo changes um, that kind of keep you hooked in for the entirety of that. A uh, really cool build up at the start of that track as well. It's kind of like a, a slow burn kind of piano piece. Uh, it goes right into kind of very rapid drumming, layered with lots of kind of epic guitar leads. And uh, I want to say there was some keys in the background as well. Yeah, oh, um, definitely. Yeah, the, 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 there's the <laughs> prog bands. T- it's weird a bit because prog bands, t- the prog bands that I have listened to in the past, Dave, yes. um, like if you're going to put some keys in, they tend to sometimes be mixed a lot louder than they necessarily should be. And that's yeah, coming yeah. from a keyboard player, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Why are we doing this? Um, and it's there, but it's it, once again, it's there for a purpose and it's to benefit yeah. the song as opposed to look at this virtuoso key solo. Yeah, um, absolutely. Spot on placement for it. Yeah, and I think it, um, even though it's not like in your face, it definitely thickens up 
the sound as well. It sounds huge. Um, but that track, uh, Salt, it kind of slows right down in an absolute belter of a, a groove. It's a right headbanger as well. Um, and actually that part of the song ends up being the chorus which I thought was really cool as well because a lot of times you have the kind of heavy verses those kind of bouncy moments but with this one they kept it for the chorus which was cool and huge as well um, one thing I need to completely agree with you on though is uh, Jim Gray has a insane set of pipes on him oh, yeah. It's like ridiculous. this guy's <laughs> his, his range is unbelievable um, and you'll hear that on, on tracks like Salt um, I thought his, his vocal delivery was a little reminiscent of um, Ian Kenny from Carnival at times. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, which, well, I mean, that's the same part of the world, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah. Um, but even though he, he reminded me of him, he still, he still kind of sounded original enough that um, he has his own sound. Um, they had like a little kind of breather track in the middle called Resonate, when, and it kind of reminded me of the, the Catatonia album we had uh, mm. discussed in the last podcast. It's very kind of like stripped back, minimalist. Um, and just kind of allows the listener to reset and kind of get ready for the second half of the album. And then the second half, half of the album is, again, filled with some really well-written songs, um, tracks like Ocean Rise. Um, I, I felt that song really demonstrated how good Caligula Horses have become, writing like a catchy as hell chorus. Um, and the track will get, that track will get stuck in your head for days. Uh, Valkyrie is... 130% written for the live stage like yeah. the r- riffs on that are so meaty and like um, the rhythms are very infectious um, when it get got towards the end of the album um, they kind of fooled me a little bit because I, I noticed there was a track coming up that was like 10 and a half minutes and I thought alright ah, that'll be the big epic melodic <laughs> track with all the layers and all the solos but uh, no, I was uh, completely wrong. Uh, the second last track um, is called Autumn, and it's actually the kind of big kind of ballad style, uh, kind of ballad style track that's kind of drenched in like tranquil melodies and clean guitar tones and stuff. Um, and while I like the track, um, I do prefer Caligula when they're a bit more riffy. Uh, just and again, it's just a personal preference to be honest. But um, Fortunately, the last track, um, The Ascent, that you mentioned, ticks all the boxes for me. Um, a lot of a big mix of kind of heavy, proggy riffs that almost reminded me of like Op- Opeth at times, mm-hmm. um, which was kind of bizarre, but uh, I liked it. I dug it. Um, and there's some of the kind of heaviest riffs on the album, uh, on that track. Um, another track that kind of showcased, firstly, how um, how far the songwriting chops of Caligula's course Caligula's horse, that's difficult to say. Caligula's <laughs> horse have come um, and the kind of transition between those kind of contrasting segments on the track were absolutely seamless. Um, it was the kind of perfect end to the album, to be honest. Uh, I feel kind of overall um, Rise Radiant is a, a tighter, more mature album than In Contact. Uh, the songs sound more distinguished, uh, as I've mentioned, less kind of experimental. And the production is just uh, next level. I thought it was a, an excellent production. Um, a really enjoyable album, actually. Um, and as you said, it's one I've went back to a few times. Um, there's a lot of really cool moments on it that you can just really bang your head to and really get into it. And um, vocalist, uh, Jim, amazing. Like, absolutely superb vocalist. Um, really enjoyed it. I'm trying to think rating-wise where I would put it. Um, for me... Uh, Although Bloom and In Contact um, did very well for the band, they were, as I said, a little too experimental for me at times. Um, so I maybe wouldn't have rated those albums as highly as, as other people would have. Um, for me, this is probably a, a four. Yeah, um, the same, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think, I, I, like I say, I've, I've listened to it three times uh, since we got it through, what, two, yeah. three weeks ago. Um, and I'll probably take a little break from it now for a month, two months. Uh, but I'll definitely come back to this album again this year. Uh, yeah. There's there's a lot to mine out of it in the best possible way. Um, I think a four is an appropriate grade for this because I don't think we're even scratching the surface with this band. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think um, like with time uh, and with more miles under their belt, and you know, especially off the back of this, where there are so many ideas going around and all of them really good. Uh, yeah. I think, you know, we could be looking for, like, incre- we could be looking at a potential five-star album, you know, maybe next to the album after. Yeah. A, a really, a really welcome surprise from, 
like I say, I, I knew the name, but that was literally it. And then back then I got through the album the first time, I was like, mm. where have you been? And I hadn't even thought of the <laughs> Carnival thing either, because like I've been listening to a shitload of Carnival since yeah. they, they, they kind of started putting their stuff also in the uh, digital media platforms as well, which yeah, has yeah. been a, a welcome surprise for, for checking out The Matter, which is one of my favourite albums. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's been it's been, it's been been interesting, Dave. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like, like if, you, if you are a fan of really well-written, really beautiful melodies, um, but like Dave says, with the chops to, to fire at riffs to get your head banging, uh, yeah. and, and songs that will take you on a journey, then Caligula's Horse should be in your playlist right now. Definitely. Um, again, props to the guitarists in that band, uh, Sam Vallon and Adrian Golby. Um, really, like, phenomenal guitarists. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to hearing to whatever whatever they do next, um, because this album is, is very good indeed. Um, and I think fans of this style will really get on board with us, to be honest. Um, uh, it sounds amazing. Like, production, as I said before, really good. Um but I'm, I'm going to go 4 out of 5 yeah for me that's my uh, my rating on this one uh, definitely check it out um, when it drops uh, May 22nd it's out Rise Radiant uh, out on Inside Out Music um, you can check out the band uh, on Facebook facebook.com forward slash Caligula's Horse Band <laughs> 